Hello, everybody. This video, we are going to finish section 3.4, rate of change of composite functions. And uh, before the spring break, we finish section 3.3. .3. So first, uh, let's go over some of the 3.3. .3. Um, so in section 3.3, .3, we've learned the first form of the chain rule. So for the first form of the chain rule, we use uh, this notation df dx equals to df dt times dt dx for the function f of t of x. Um, so for example, um, let me see. Okay, so example four. Example four. So um, example four gives, we are given two functions, two different functions. The first one is the function v of t, and the second one is a of v. So you can see that v is the, uh, a of v and v of t, they have the common letter, that is v. So actually, in the black box, on the right side, you can see the first function, v of t. So t is the input, the unit is here. And then the first box is uh, the function, the rule, which is v. So the output, the corresponding output is v of t. And the unit is just uh, v of t right here. This is the unit. And then this, um, the uh, output of the first function is actually the, in, the input of the second function. And the second function is a of v, so the same v of t. And this time, the function is a. So the new output is just the a of v of t. a of v of t, the, the unit is just right here. The first unit after a of v is the output unit, which is dollars. So the unit is just the a of v of t, and the unit is dollars. So you can see here, we have a middle part, that is v of t. But actually, if um, this is the black box, so we can see that in the black box, the input is just, the, for the new function, the input is just the t year, and the new output is a of v of t dollars. So even though we don't know what's inside, it's okay. As long as you know the new... No, it's not okay. You have to know what's inside. That is just the V of T. So the basic idea is the V of T, the uh, output of the first function V, is also the, the input of the second function A. So for example, um, for, uh, the question A is just the years and dollars. So the new function, you can see, the key part is a, input is t, but you can use a of t, or you can also use a of v of t. So for question b, so for question b, what is the v of 2001? v of 2001 is just uh, um, in year 2000, 2011. This is the corresponding v of 2011. So the number, the first part is number, second part is the unit. Now E S just S, and then it's like the input. For example, let's change the color to black. Two thousand and eleven. This is the input, and the V of two thousand eleven is actually the output. Ten thousand wireless. And then the second function ten thousand is the new input variable for the second function, and the output is just the A of ten thousand. So A of ten thousand is. Uh, Right here, when one uh, v of t equals to ten thousand, then we have that the average cost is this one. So this is the output, is one hundred and four point zero point ten. Unit is just a dollars. So you can see here, actually, this is our one point one hundred and point one hundred and forty two point ten dollars. So you can see here, in the black box, what is the input? 2011 unit year. What is the output? $104.10. But in order to get $104.10, we have to calculate for the middle part. 10,000 wellings first by using V of 2011. And then we use the A of 10,000. So this is the key part. You have to calculate for the value first. No matter it is the function value a of something or a prime of something. We have to calculate for the middle part first. And then 
the conclusion is just the same. So this question is uh, is a very important section in three point three to help you go over the rates rates of change for functions that can be composed, and then question C. Question C, you can see here, this is the first form of the chain rule. In section 3.4, we're going to talk about the second form of the chain rule. Actually, they're talking about the same thing by, by using different forms. So this one, dA dT A is the function, T is the input variable. So actually, we are talking about the whole black box, dA dT. So dA dT, since we have the middle one, that is, the, the, uh, that is right here, this one. So d a d t we are this one means we are given the the value of t two thousand and eleven so by using the first form of the chain rule that is just the uh, um d f d x equals to d f d t d t d x the t is actually just the v here in this question so just the d a d t so we know d a d t um equals to d a d v dv dt. But here, since we are given the specific value of v, which is just uh, t, which is just a 2011, so we use t equals to 2011 here. So t, we know the value of t is 2011. So here, the value of t is 2011. So that's how we got this one and that one. Then what about this one? This one you can see here, the, in the denominator is dv. That means the value of this one must be the, the, the value of this one must be given, that is the value of v instead of the value of t, because the denominator is v, that means the input for the second function is v. So actually we have to give it, we have to calculate for the value of v. That means when t equals to 2011, what is the value of v? You can just check it, that is right here, 10,000. So here the value of v is 10,000. So that's how we got the specific value. And then we just plug in the second form, dv dt. dv dt is just the 100. That is because dv dt, that means v prime of, v prime of 2001, 2011. So it's right here. Increasing means positive, increasing by 100 values per year. So this is dv dt. So the second part is just the uh, 100 per year. And what about the DIDV when V equals to 2011, when V equals to 10,000? So when V equals, v equals to 10,000, then let's check it one by one. The average cost to produce a student value is $142. This is not the derivative. This is not the value we are looking for. And then let's keep reading. And the average cost is decreasing. Decreasing means negative. Decreasing by... Point one five dollars per value. So this is the d d uh a d v. A, a means the average cost. V means the number of values. So the unit should be dollars per value, and this is the value we are looking for. And uh, since it is decreasing, so it must be negative point one five dollars per value. And so you can see for the unit. This values and this one can be cancelled. So the only unit left is dollars per year. And the number says uh, minus fifteen dollars unit is dollars per year. Mm. So this question gives you uh, help you to helps you to review what is the first form of the chain rule? What is the key part of the first form of the chain rule? And uh, a similar question uh some students asked me about the spring break about example six. So I will go over example six one more time. So the first one, we are given h of minus one equals to five, g of five equals to point two, and the dh dx, or you can just say h prime of x. dh dx is the same as h prime of x, but we are given, if we are given the value of x, for example, dh dx, we use the same notation. dh dx, x equals to minus 1. Then this one is the same. The first part, dh dx, is h prime of x. And this part means we are given the value of x that is minus 1. So just the h prime of minus 1. They are the same thing. Just the notation is different. Okay, so let's go back to this question. 
what is the g of h of minus 1? So for this one, okay, the order, if you want to calculate for this one, the order first, you, the first step you have to calculate is the inside one, that is, what is the value of h minus 1? And then you plug in the value h of minus 1 to this part, step number 1, step number 2. So for example, uh, let's go, let's just uh, do this question. So g of h of minus 1, h of minus 1 is given, that is just a 5, so just the g of 5. And what is g of 5? g of 5 is also given, that is 0 0.2. So the first one is not a, about the derivative, it's just about the function value. And then let's see, what about the second one? dg dx, or you can just use g prime of minus 1, they're the same thing. But dg dx will help you because the first form of the chain rule is written by dg dx. So dg dx first equals to, we know, equals to, because this is the function is d is g of h. So it's like g of h is like the first one. The first function is h, x, and the output h of x. The second function in the black box is g. So the output is g of h of x. And then, um, for this question, first, uh, let's use the first uh, form of the chain rule. It's dg dh multiplied by dh dx. Because this one, we are given the specific value. So that means you must get a you must get a value that is the result. So first one, h is x is in the denominator. So the value of x is just uh, given directly. We can just uh, use the number here. That is just the x equals to minus 1. This is the second part. And the first part, h is in the denominator, so this part must be the value of h. So the question is, what is the value of h? Um, this part, so remember, similar to the last question, the violin question, when this is a, the question mark part, so you can just use this is given x equals to minus 1. So actually the value of h is when x equals to minus 1. What is the value of h? So what is h? That is just the h of minus 1. h of minus 1 is given directly. That is 5. So this is just the 5. And then this part, the function value is given directly. That is just a 3. So multiply by 3. And the first part, dg dh, is also given, pay attention to the value of h. This is minus 1.5. So it's just the minus 1.5 times 3. That is minus 4.5. Then we are done with this part. So these two examples, first one is about a uh, specific question about the wiring. The second one is just example 6. It's just uh, numbers, which is the key part of the uh, first form of the chain rule. So next, uh, let's start the new section, section 3.4. Section 3.4, rates of change of composite functions. So this one, for a composite function, at least two functions in the black box, in the black box, there must be at least two functions in order to make a function composition. So for this one, let's say the two functions is h, the first the inside function is h, the outside function is g. So you can see here, this is a new notation, inside uh, outside function g. So you can see two functions, g and h. g is the outside, in the outside of the parentheses, and the other one, inside function h. h is the inside function, h of x. So its derivative is given by the first form, the second form of the chain rule. What is the first form of the chain rule? For example, d, g, dx. This is the first form dg dx equals to dg dh multiplied by dh dx. So this is the first form. And the second form, instead of using dg dx, we use, uh, or instead of using df dx, we use f prime of x, but they're the same thing. f prime of x equals to first take the derivative of the outside function, that is g prime, and copy the inside part, that is g prime of h of x, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, that is h prime of x. So the second form of the chain rule is just the f prime of x equals to the derivative of the outside function, then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, h prime of x. 
So this is the second form of the chain rule, which is which is the key part of this section, of section three point four. And uh, so you can see the next part by multiplying. This one shows you the details. The derivative of the outside function evaluated at the inside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So let's uh, do one example together. And then for the rest uh, examples, first uh, pause the video, try to do it by yourself. And then uh, because, uh, I'm going to show you all the solution of this section. So do it by yourself first, and then check the solutions. So the first example, example, um, f of x equals to um, x cubed minus 5x squared to the 2 thirds power. So for this question, some students may, can be uh, maybe confused about what is the inside function, what is the outside function. So um, for example, if I'm asking you the value of uh, f of, uh, for example, f of uh, 3. f of 6. So, okay, for example, this question is asking you, what is the value? The function is given by this one. What is the value of f of 6? So we know f of 6, the first step, if you want to calculate for the f of 6, is to plug in x equals to 6. So that means, you can see here, we have an inside function. This is the inside of the parentheses. So that means, first one, we have to plug in x equals to 6. Calculate step number one. What is the value x cubed minus 5x squared? If we are given x equals to 6, then you have to plug in 6 cubed minus 5, 6, 6 squared. And the value is uh, 6 cubed to minus oh, 5x squared. The number is 36. And then step number 2 is the outside function. Is no matter what it is, for example, if it is h, then take h to the 2 thirds power. So that means 36 to the 2 thirds power. That is the value of f of 6. So you can see, actually, the, the order minus, that means the first one you have to calculate for the, the inside function. And then by using the uh, result of the inside function of the first function, that that output value is actually the input value of the outside function of the second one. So for this one, the uh, inside function is just, uh, so you can see here, note that f of x takes the form f of x equals to the inside function to the 2 thirds power. So we know the inside function is just the x cubed, this part, which is right here h of x equals to x cubed minus 5x squared. And the corresponding outside function is, uh, you can see here, the outside function is g of h equals to h to the 2 thirds power. So if uh, h is the inside, just uh, take it to the 2 thirds power. This is the outside function. And then step b, so take the derivative first. Let's try to finish this one, then this one. So you can see, we know the inside. Uh, we know the inside function is this one. What is the derivative of the inside function? This is the uh, similar to uh, section three point one. Some questions. So h prime of x, x cubed derivative is three x squared. The second term is a ten x derivative is ten x, and then we are done. Then because for the, this one, the uh the inside function is a function of x. So the derivative must be must be also a function of x. You cannot get a h, and then for the first function for the outside function g of h, that means the function is a function of h. Or or in other words, everything should be of about x. Oh, excuse me, about h or a constant number. You cannot have x there because this is not a function of x. So similarly, the derivative must be pay attention to the variable. It must be h. So the derivative just, uh, this is x to the nth power. The derivative is n multiplied by x to the n minus 1's power. Then we got this one. So now we have the derivative of inside function and the derivative the derivative in, of the inside function and the derivative of the outside function. So And then the next step, 
we have to use the second form of the chain rule. This is the derivative of the, of the outside function, and this is the derivative of the inside function. So we multiply them together, then let's see what can we get from here. So first, uh, we multiply them together. And for this one, it's just a 3x square minus 10x. And for this one, it's just a 2 third of multiplied by h to the minus 1 third power. So you can see here for the inside function, but we know this is, a, you can see the notation f prime of x. That means this is a function of x. We cannot have h there. So, but we are given that h, what is h? h is just the inside function. Because you can see here, g of h. Uh, and the function is g of h of x. And so the inside function is just h. So plug in here, plug in h x equals h of x equals to this one, and then you can see here after you plug it in, we got two thirds is a constant function. Let's keep it, and then x cube, x x cube, um, h equals to this one. So x cube minus five x squared. This is our h, and then take it to the to minus one third power. Then we are done. So let's review. First one we take. What is the uh, inside function? What is the outside function? What is the corresponding notation? First one is h of x, second one g of h. And then the step b takes the derivative of the inside function and the outside function. Keep the notation. If it is h, then just use h. If it is x, just use x. And the last step, multiply them together. And then, because it's a function of x, replace h by using the h of x equals to x cubed minus 5x squared to make sure we have no h in the final result. The result must be a function of x, then we are done. The next uh, um, example two. So for example two, please the video, try to do it by yourself. All right, now let's let's look at the question two. This one f of x equals to natural log natural log of x cubed minus five x squared. So, for example, still if I ask you what is the value of f of nine, so the first thing you you have to do is what is the value of the inside one? What is the x cubed minus five x squared when we are given x equals to nine? So plug it in. That is nine cubed minus five x squared, five nine squared, and the value is three hundred twenty four. So after we have the three hundred twenty four, we plug it in natural log of three hundred twenty four. Or in other words, natural ln of h, and we are given the value of h just at this part. So the result is natural log of 324. So you can see we have step number one, step number two. That means they are the uh, corresponding inside function and the outside function. So for this one, uh, x cubed minus 5x squared is the, in the inside of the parentheses, that is our inside function. So inside function, h of x equals to x cubed minus 5x squared. And what is the corresponding outside function? Pay attention to the notation. It's not g of x equals to natural log of x. This is not correct, because this x and the x, they are different. So this one is g of h. The outside function is g of h. g of h, that means, OK, the inside bar is just h. Then the, new, the second function, g of h, equals to natural log of h. Then we are done. So now we have the inside function and the outside function. Next step, let's take the derivative. h prime of x equals to the first term, x cubed derivative as 3x squared. The second term is just a minus 10x. And then the derivative of the outside function, g prime of h, g prime, g prime of h equals to 1 over h. So the, um, the last step, step number, step c, is to multiply them together. The derivative of the inside function is right here. And the, this is the derivative of the outside function. It's 1 over the 1 over h means 1 over the inside function. 
So the plug in the inside function equals to x cubed minus 5x squared. So this is just 1 over the inside function, 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed minus 5x squared, and multiply them together. So you can see here, this is a function of x, and the result is also a function of x. We have no h there. All right, example three is a uh, example three is similar. The inside function is uh, so the first one you have to calculate for is the this one, and this is the inside function. So for the inside function is uh, h of x, just the index, just the power that is x cubed minus five x squared. This is our h of x, and the outside function is just the g of h g of h equals to e to the h power, because uh, this part is just the h, and so the outside function is e to the h power. And this is the um, inside and outside function. So next, uh, step b, similar, the derivative is just x prime of x, h prime of x equals to 3x squared minus 10x, and the corresponding g, g prime of h is just the, uh, because we know the derivative of e to the x is just itself, that is e to the x. So this one just e to the h. The last step, multiply them together. Um, you can see here, h prime of x, plug it in right here. And then g prime of x, h of x, e to the h is the power, e to the inside function. So plug in inside function, that is just the h. Then we are done. Uh, example four. Example example four is the. It's pretty similar to the last example. So the first one, this is the inside function, and the two to the h is the outside function. So this one, h of x equals to the inside function x cubed minus five x squared. Then this is this part is just the two to the h of x. So the outside is just the two to the h. So let's finish this part. The inside function is just the h of x equals to x cubed minus 5x squared. And the corresponding outside function is just the g of h equals to 2 to the h's power. So the corresponding derivative is just the um, h prime of x equals to 3x squared minus 10x. And the g prime of h equals to 2 to the h's power multiplied by natural log of 2, natural log of, of b. So we use the uh, formula b to the x power, the derivative is b to the x power multiplied by natural log of b. So this is the formula we used. Then the next step, multiply them together. 2 to the h's power. You can see here, pay attention to the natural log of b. Some students just use 2 to the, just only have this part, ignore natural log of b. That's not correct. So make sure you got the correct answer. Next one, example five. So example one, two, three, four shows you the details. That means example one, two, three, four shows you all the three steps. But for, uh, from example five, you can see here, we don't, you are, you are not given any uh, hints, just uh, the question, f of x equals to this one, and what is the corresponding derivative? But ma keep in mind, uh, just to follow the similar steps, even though we are not given A, B, C, but you can do it by yourself. So for example, the first one, okay, still pause the video and finish the, 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 the example five. Because uh, for this section, the key point is to have more practice. That, that's, that is the only way for you to uh, um, know this part. So let's see, section, uh, example 5a. Still, we use the second form of the chain rule. So for this one, we have, first, uh, we know this is the inside function. This is our h of x in the parent inside of the parentheses. Then the outside function is h of x to the minus 2's power. So on the left side, on the right side, I will just uh, give you, uh, still, the inside function is g, uh, the... Uh, the inside function is h of x. Inside function h of x equals to minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And the outside function. 
the outside function uh, g of h is just uh, h to the minus 2th power. So we can just uh, take the derivative of this one directly. The derivative of the uh, inside function is just uh, minus this one. So derivative just minus 6x plus 2. Okay, this is the derivative of the inside function. Then what about the derivative of the outside function? h to the minus 2th power, we know the derivative is minus 2 multiplied by h to the minus 2 minus 1. That is minus 3th power. So what is the this one? It's just the h. So we are given the h is right here. This is h. So just to plug in, use x instead of h minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 to be done. And similar, for example, b, the uh, inside function and the outside function. The inside function is g of h, or uh, inside function is h of x. So h of x, so this one is equals to uh, minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 to the minus 1 to the uh, one half the power. So this one is uh, the inside function is just uh, this part. The inside function. So minus three x squared plus two x minus five, and the corresponding outside function is just the g of h equals to uh. Now, this part is h. That means this part is h. So g of h just the h to the minus h to the one half the power. So the derivative is uh, um, minus 6x plus 2. This is the derivative of the inside function of this one. And then h to the 1 half the power, just the 1 half multiplied by h to the minus 1 half the power. And h just equals to this one, so plug it in. That is just a minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Next, uh, example C. So for the video, since we have enough time to finish all the questions, so I'm going to just uh, show all the details of the nine examples in section 3.4. So let's see the next one. Oh, we have one here. So for the first, for, uh, for the first uh, ABCD, I'm going to show you the inside and the outside function. For the rest of them, I'm just uh, write down the solutions. And for this one, the... Um, The inside function is just the h of x equals to this part. The inside function equals to natural log of x. The outside function g of h equals to this part. Suppose it is uh, just a box. So box to the minus 2th power. The box is h, so h to the minus 2th power. Then we are done. Oh, we are not done. We just finished the inside and outside function. The next, we have to take the derivative. So the derivative, we know. Let's, this time, let's try a different method. Uh, you can see you, um, that, for example, A and B, first we finish this part, then finish the, the other part. That means we take the derivative of the outside function, of the inside function first, then take the derivative of the uh, outside function. But actually, they're the same thing. We can also take the, the, the derivative of the outside function first, and then multiply by the right side, multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So the outside function, is h to the minus 2th power. So we know the derivative is just the minus 2 multiplied by h to the minus 2 minus 1's power, minus 3's power. And what is the h? Right here, natural log of x. So just the log of x. Then this is the outside, this is the uh, derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, 1 over x, then we are done. Next, uh, um, f for prime of x equals to the uh, inside function. Let's try this one. Ah, this is convenient. So for this one, the inside function is um 
The inside function, there are, for this one, we have different ways. But I will just show you one way. One, the first way is the, we can rewrite this function as the 3 multiplied by natural log of x to the 1 half the power. So the first the inside function, we can use, the, um, okay, so the, <coughs> first one, the inside function can be natural log of x. Then the corresponding outside function is, g of h equals to 3 multiplied by the square root of h. So this is one way. So the corresponding derivative is just the first that we take this one equals to 3 multiplied by h to the 1 half power. So the derivative is just the 3 multiplied by 1 half h to the minus 1 half power. h to the minus 1 half the power. But since we cannot have h, we have to plug in natural log of x, or natural log of x. So this is just a natural log of x to the minus 1 half the power, because the derivative of this one is a 3 half h to the minus 1 half. This is 3 half, and this is our h to the minus 1 half. So this is the derivative of the outside function. And then, um, Then we have to multiply by the, so this is the, of the outside function. Multiply by the derivative of the inside function, just the one over x, then we are done. And this term is just the three half. So this is uh, question D. So question uh, E, let's try question E directly f prime of x equals to the outside function ln natural log of something. So natural log of x, then we know the derivative is just the 1 over the same c, 1 over h. So let's do it. 1 over minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. So this is the derivative of the outside function. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function, this is the inside function. So the derivative of the Equation inside of the parentheses is just a minus 6x plus 2. Then we are done. The next one, h, f prime of x equals to, for this one, it's a little bit complicated, but this one is similar to question D. So for this one, I recommend you to write down what is the uh, g of h, what is the h of x. That means what is the inside and the outside function. So the derivative is the first 2 multiplied by f of x. Is 2 is a constant number, so let's keep it. And then what about the derivative of this one? Natural log of something is the outside function. So we know um, natural log of x derivative is just the 1 over x. So but here, natural log of uh, h just derivative just the 1 over h, so just the 1 over square root of x. And then multiply by square root of x is the inside function h of x. So this is the derivative of the outside function. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, rewrite it as x to the 1 half power, so multiply by 1 half x to the uh, minus 1 half power. So this is the derivative. And let's see if we can uh, combine them. So first, uh, we have the 2 here and the 1 half here. So the number is cancelled. And then what about the 1 over square root of x term? This is just the first the 1 over x to the 1 half the power. And then since the 1 half is in the denominator, so it is x to the minus 1 half the power. So you can see here, the numbers cancel. Then we have, uh, um, so actually, this term and this term, they're the same thing. So you can just use square root of x multiplied by another square root of x. Then we just got 1 over x. So let's just leave it here. And the next one, g of x. So this one is the, um, and this one is the same. So f prime of x, we have a 0.5. That is a constant number. 0.5 multiplied by e to the h of x e to the h. So the derivative just itself, just the e to the, we copy the h, that is a minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. Okay. And then this is just the outside function. The, uh, excuse me. This is just the derivative of the outside function. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That is just the derivative of this term. 
is just the minus 6x plus 2. This is the uh, answer. So next, uh, next, uh, h, example h. Let's see this one. For this one, we have to use the, um, this is a constant number to an in to a function of x. So for this one, we have to use the formula b, where b is a constant number, b to the x power derivative is just a b to the x multiplied by natural log of b. So this term, this time, f prime of x equals the, the first one, the outside function, 2 to the h's power. So the derivative is just the 2 to the uh, h's power, where h equals to minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. But 2 to the h's power, then multiply by natural log of b. b is 2, so natural log of b. They, just remember, we are not done. This is only the derivative. derivative of the uh, outside function. We have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And this is our inside function, h of x. The inside function, the, so the derivative is just minus 6x plus 2. So, uh, example 6. Example 6. Use addition and subtraction rules to find the, the derivative of the function. Apply the chain rule for terms that require it. Okay, so this one you can see here. Uh, for the first uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, G examples, it's just the one term. You can see here, all of them just the one part. But now we have an equation that is a uh, summation of three terms. So that means we are uh, four terms, excuse me. One, two, three, four. So that means we have to take the derivative one by one. So first, uh, let's see, what about this one? e to the h, e to the 2x cube. So 2x cube is the uh, h. So derivative is just the e to the 2x square. Then multiply by the derivative, like e to the h, where h of x equals to 2x square, 2x cube. The derivative of this one is just the e, prime, e, e to the h. h equals to this one, so we got this part. And then multiply by, so this is just the, the derivative of the outside function. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. What is the inside function? 2x cubed. So the derivative is just multiply by 6x squared. And then we are done. This is the derivative of the first term. Plus the derivative of the second part is just the 2 over x. Derivative of the third term. The third term equals to minus five x to the minus uh, x to the one half power. So derivative just the uh, um, wait a minute, just the minus um five half multiplied by x to the one half minus one. That is minus one half power. So what about the last term? The last term pi square pi, minus pi square is a constant number. It's a constant number. So the derivative is just a zero. Then we are done. We have only the summation of three terms because the the last part is the uh, constant number. So next question. So the first six examples, all of them are just about a composition, a function composition of two functions. So that means in the black box, we have only two functions. So actually, we can do the same thing for multiple functions. For example, in the black, bo in the black box, we have uh, three or four or even more functions inside of it. But because of... Uh, we can just follow the same rule, step by step. Take the derivative of the first function, multiply by the derivative of the second function, then multiply by the derivative of the third function, the last function, or you can say derivative of the outside function. But just the difference, the difference is like, instead of only have inside and outside function, we may have more functions. For example, in this in this box, we are given three, the function composition, uh, the, uh, it's a uh, three functions. f of x equals to g of h of k of x. So the derivative is just a st step by step. So, so, uh, k of x derivative k prime of x. Then the second function is h. So we multiply by h prime of k of x. You have to uh, copy the inside one, that is uh, k of x. And then multiply by the last part is the function g. So multiply by the g prime of h of k of x, 
This is our uh, the multiply all of them together. Takes the derivative of the three functions step by step. Then let's see. Our uh, next example, we're gonna use the same thing. So first, let's see. This is a more complicated than the first several examples. Then let's see what is the corresponding um, k of x, h of k, g of h of k of x. So this is the, you can see here. If if we wanna calculate for the f of ten. So. What is the first part we have to calculate for? That is just this one. So that means we have to cal we have to know what is the minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. What is the value of this one when we are given the value of x equals to 10? So we have to plug in this one. Suppose this value is a triangle. When, when after you plug in uh, x equals to 10, then the next step is what is the square root of the triangle? After you plug in the uh, the function is just a uh, triangle. So after you have this part, suppose the square root of a triangle is a square. Then the last part will be, okay, all right, now we know this part equals to triangle, and the square root of a triangle equals to square. And the last part is, what is the e to the square? So you can see uh, we have the, the order actually minus. So now, after uh, so now let's uh, try to do it step by step. What is the first uh, k prime is the so-called inside function if we are only given two functions. So this time the k of x is just the, the um, minus three x squared plus two x minus five. This is our k of x. Then the next one, what is the h of k of x? Or what is the h of k? h of k is right here. The inside, this is k. So the uh, h of k is just a square root of k. The last part, after we know the, uh, the yellow part is square root of k, then the whole result is just uh, the uh, g of h. Right here, g of h just just equals to the e to the square root of k's power, or e to by using the h we have e to the h's power. Then we are done. So now next, uh, let's take the derivative that is f prime of x. The derivative of the um of the first function e to the h, just the e to the h. But here we cannot use h; we have to use the x. What is h? h is a uh, square root of k. So square root of k, but still we cannot use k because this is not a function of k. Then let's keep keep uh, using the first one, k of x. This is k. So plug in minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. But this is just the, the this is just the yellow part. Next, uh, what is the blue or what is the green part? Green part, we have to use the green, uh, okay. The yellow one, this is the yellow one. Next one, the blue one. All right, the um, blue one, the yellow one. And the next one, Clemson Orange. All right. So um, now we are done with the yellow one. Then what about the blue one? H of k, square root of uh, this one is equals to k to the, min uh, to the one half the power. So the derivative is just one half multiplied by the k to the minus one half the power. But since we cannot use k, and then we have to plug in the orange one, k of x, just plug in minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 5. And then multiply by okay. So this part is the blue part. It's the uh what blue green part, yes, the green part. The last part is the orange part, your favorite color. Orange orange part is derivative of the orange part is just minus six x plus two. This one looks different from the clamps <laughs> orange. This is more like but unfortunately, this is orange. This is right. All right. 
no orange here. So this is an alpha prime of x. Then similar, example eight. Oh, we have two more pages. Uh, example eight, alpha prime of x. So for this one, alpha prime of x, we have two terms. First term is a constant number, derivative is zero. We don't have to consider it. The second term, deriv uh, derivative is minus three. Uh, minus three is a constant number, so just uh, keep it here. Then natural log of something. So we know the derivative is just one over something. Something is x squared plus one. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That is just a 2x plus 1. 2x. And then for this one, combine the minus 2 and the 2. Minus 3 and the 2. So derivative is just a minus 6x divided by x squared plus 1. And next one, as prime of t. The derivative is that 2 is a constant number. Leave it here. And then e to the something. Derivative is just the e to the 3t squared. And then uh, multiply by the derivative of this term, is just a 6t. So the result is just, the solution is just a 12 e to the uh, 3t squared multiplied by t. Next one, example c. For example c, um, f of prime of x. The first term, derivative of the first term, c multiplied by f of x, the derivative is just a c multiplied by f of prime of x. So here, similar, c is our constant number, so just uh, keep it, leave it there. And then e to the, so this is a trick, uh, e to the, so we know the derivative is just a e to the 0.5x, but we are not done. We have to multiply by the derivative of this term. That is just a 0.5. So for example, what is the derivative of e to the pi x? Derivative is first, this is a function composition. The so first is just the e to the pi x. Then you have to multiply by the derivative of pi x. Derivative of pi x is just pi. So we have the this term. Next part, oh, then we are not done. Minus pi x, so my derivative is just a minus pi. And the last term plus e, e square. E square is a constant number, so derivative is zero. And then example d. Example d. First, let's rewrite this function. This is a six. It's a constant number. Multiply by x square plus five x. Triangle. This one is just equal to triangle. Um. Two thirds power. Oh, excuse me. This is one third. Two thirds is a triangle. Two thirds is a or you can just use a they're the same thing. So next. Uh, So we have the, now we have this term and the derivative f prime of x just uh, six six is a constant number let's keep it here and then multiply by the h of x this is our h of x so h to the one third power derivative is just the one third multiply by h to the minus uh, one third minus one which is minus two third. But instead of using h, we have to plug in h of x equals to the um, x squared plus 5x. But we are not done. Then we have to multiply by the derivative of the corresponding, the so-called h of x. The derivative is just a 2x plus 5. So this is the derivative. Then let's combine the common terms. So, um... The first part is just a 2, then the rest term is that. Then we are done. Next, example E. Example E, since you, you, you can see that we have a hint. Before taking the derivative, rewrite the function using a negative 
exponent for the denominator. So for the denominator, this one, this function is in the denominator. So we can just use the minus because one over h equals to h to the minus one or one over h to the nth power equals to h to the minus nth power. So this term is the five is right here. And then one over this, this term is just uh, to the minus two power. Then let's see what is the derivative of this one. f prime of x equals to the constant number, keep it there, five, seven. Then this is our h of x. The outside function is just the h to the minus two power. So just the, um, so the derivative is just the minus two multiplied by the h of x to the minus three power. Then just a plug in h of x equals to x cube or minus x to the minus three power. And but then we are not done because you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That means h prime of x. h prime of x is just a three x squared minus one. So this term is just a minus 10 over 7. Then we are done. So next, example h. Oh, this is a really long lecture. H, uh, next one, h of x. So still, first one, let's rewrite this function. Because uh, x, a function of x is in the denominator, then you can just use uh, the same the same trick. So Rewrite this function as 15.2 multiplied by 1 plus 2.4 e to the 0.3x power because this one is in the denominator, so just to the minus 1's power. So now we have this function, they are the same function, but this one is easier to take the derivative. And then this time, f prime of x just equals to 15.2 is the constant, then multiplied by 1 plus 2.4 e to the 0.3x to the um, minus 1 minus 1. Excuse me, it should be. All right, this is the constant term. The next one, this is a uh, function competition. Subtract square to the minus one's power. So it's just the minus one. Then plus 2.4 e to the point three x minus two's power. Then we have to multiply. This is the this is a very good example. And then multiply by the um, this part. The first term, 1, the derivative is just 0. And the second term is just 2.4. e to the, pay attention to this part, e to the 0.3x. Still, we are not done, because uh, we still have this part. Just remember, e to the pi x, the derivative, e to the pi x multiplied by pi. So for this one, um, we have to multiply by the coefficient of x. They just a point of three. So for this one, write down what is the uh for just uh, following the same steps, write down what is the k, what is the uh h, what is the g. So it will help you to understand it more. Why this is the why we have a product of three terms instead of just two. And the next one, g prime or uh, next one, f prime of x. This is the uh, 2 to the natural log of x, then multiply by natural log of 2. Then we are not done. If it is 2 to the x, then derivative is just uh, 2 to the x, multiply by natural log of 2. But since now, the, the same position, this example is x, but this one is now the x, it's a function. So we know this is a function, comp a composite function. So we have to mu multiply by the derivative of our natural log of x, that is just 1 over x. Next example, f prime of x. This one just equals to 3 multiplied by x squared plus 1 to the 1 half's power. So the derivative is just a 3 multiplied by 1 half x squared plus 1 to the 1 half minus 1, which is minus 1 half. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, that is just a 2x. Then combine the common terms, 2 can be cancelled. 2, um, this 2 can be cancelled, so just... Uh, 3x, x squared plus 1, minus 1 half the power. The last example, 
Example nine. This one instead of just using the taking the derivative, we have a context. Write a completely defined model or completely defined rate of change model for each of the models given below. So for the first one, a middle for average number of chirps each minute by a cricket is f of t. So we know this is a function of t. The rule of function is f. f of t equals to this one. So what is the uh what is the um, completely defined rate uh, rate of change model? So rate of change model, the first part we have to take the derivative f prime of t. f prime of t, the derivative of this one, seven point eight e to the um point zero four zero seven t, then multiply by the constant number, uh, the constant the coefficient coefficient point zero four zero seven. So you have to include the unit. The unit for derivative is output unit per input unit. And the output unit is just the chirps. The input unit is degree. So the out, the uh, corresponding derivative unit for derivative is just the chirp output unit chirps per input unit per degree. So now this one gives what? Gives the keyword rate of change. Gives the rate of change of what? You have to finish the whole sentence. Gives the rate of change in the average number of chirps each minute by cricket when the temperature. T degree. So we're done. The next one, the temperature on average last summer evening in South Central Michigan can be modeled as T of H. And the uh, output unit is degrees. And the input unit is just hours. Hours, you have to finish the uh, whole part, hours of the sunset. So now, still, we have to take the, uh, we have to get the completely defined rate of change model, that means we have to take the derivative first. T prime of H. The derivative of this one. Um, You can see here, the second term is minus uh, plus 52. The derivative is just a zero. We don't have to consider it. And then this part, so only about this part, we can rewrite it as 24 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.04 e to the 0.6h plus 0 0.02 to the minus one's power, so the derivative is just minus 24. Then 1 plus 0 0.04 e to the uh, 0.6h plus 0 0.04, 0 0 0.02 to the minus two's power, because minus one, minus one. And then multiply by the middle part, that is 0 0.04 e to the 0.6h plus 0 0.02, then multiply by 0 0.6 squared. This is the power. 0.6 unit is degree. Unit is uh, output unit per input unit. So it is uh, um, output unit is uh, right here. Per input unit, input unit is uh, hour. So this one uh, gives the still keyword gives the rate of change because this is a rate of change model. So this one gives you the rate of change in the temperature on average late summer. Late summer evening in the South Central Michigan. That is eight hours after sunset. Alright, so that's all for this section.
And if you have any questions about the Weber seminar or about the examples in this section, feel free to send me an email, and uh, I will just uh, give you more examples and give you more practice questions if you need. All right, thanks for watching.